Hello, I am Joshua P. Warren, and this is Joshua P. Warren Daily. And listen up, Jedis. I have your next step for us to work together and beat the shit out of this virus phenomenon using the power of the wishing machine and radionics and manifestation. All right, if you've been paying attention to this podcast, you know that all of you out there I consider Jedis. You are all Jedi warriors. We have been working on multiple steps to combat this formidable foe. And let me tell you something. We are doing a really good job. I'll explain. We have a lot to be happy about. And it's important for us to do everything we can because let me tell you, there are people out there who also have wishing machines who might be working against us. Maybe they have another agenda. There's always the dark side, right? It's all about the force. So it's important for us to stay on task. So far, everybody's been doing a great job. Before I get into our next step, um, I want to just thank all of you for just the incredibly loving, wonderful, flattering, complimentary messages that I've received from those who watched my appearance on Rob Riggle, Global Investigator on the Discovery Channel. Of course, I appeared on a large part of that show along with uh, Dean Worsing, Steve Barone, Nick Weird, and everybody just loved it. I mean, everybody just loved that show. And uh, I mean, I've gotten messages from people all over the world. I don't know where all it aired in the world, but you know, stuff gets captured. It pops up here and there on the internet, and I don't know what methods there are to watch it. If you didn't get to see it, I'll remind you, it was episode six called Really Close Encounters, the season finale of Rob Riggle Global Investigator. And so it's it really means a lot because, you know, you go on TV and you're thinking, oh boy, I, I hope you know I don't look like a doofus and I don't get edited into some kind of a, a role that's awkward. And no, they did a wonderful job and all of you liked it. So thank you for your your messages. That means a lot to me. And, and also thank you for your patience with me because I've been, you know, I'm, I'm constantly out there getting publicity. I'm always being interviewed by somebody and I have to turn a lot of that down these days. I turned down a big interview just today, as a matter of fact. Um, and that's because sometimes I have a series of things that kind of hit all at once that have like a really big popular audience. So, for example, going on the Discovery Channel and having so many people watching that, uh, going on Justin Perry's You Are Creators YouTube channel and so many people watching that. I mean, he has over one and a half million subscribers and all these other interviews that I've been doing. I have been getting so slammed, so swamped with, um, well, with everything you can imagine. With, with messages, with orders, with questions um, that uh, it's, it's been overwhelming. It really has. And I, I always tell you, um, I read all my emails, but I can't always respond to each one of them. Um, it would be physically impossible for me to do that. But uh, I have been so overwhelmed. There's been so much feedback. There's been so much interest in the stuff that we're doing. Just to give you an idea, Dr. Mulder, is so busy right now that he ran out of parts to make wishing machines and instead of waiting for them to be shipped he got into his vehicle and drove 18 hours round trip by himself to get the parts that he needs because he hand makes every single one of these individually and ships them out as quickly as possible so if you have ordered a wishing machine please be patient this is not something that's being you know cranked out by some machine or some assembly line no i mean this is literally the product of a craftsman who is a master at what he does building these one by one and so and i know we have a lot of new people listening to the podcast who have just now discovered this podcast because of my recent media appearances and let me tell you welcome to the family you're in for a wild ride uh, but <laughs> we're glad to have you 
but please be patient with your wishing machine. It's uh, it's being made in the order in which um, the it was received, uh, and they're coming they're coming out quickly. But bear with us. So anyway, um, yeah, it's it, it gets chaotic sometimes because you know I'm not just talking about me having to answer emails from people who are like, oh, you're doing a good job, or here, let me tell you my ghost story. Now, I, you would not even understand the life that I've created for myself. I have business interests all over the world. I have customers all over the world. I own one of the largest tour companies in North Carolina, and that is in upheaval right now because everybody's like, oh, what, what's happening with my reservation? When can I come? I have on a show here in Las Vegas that's shut down right now. I'm having to deal with customers that are booked months in advance for that. I have so many questions that come in about products. I have students that take my online classes that I grade. I, I mean, it just it just goes on and on and on. Uh, my mother even texted me a couple of times and said, "Are you alive?" You know, because she had, hadn't heard from me. She was getting concerned. But no, it's it. Sometimes I just I really do have to turn off uh, everything and just be like, you know what? I'm sleeping, and I'll sleep for like 48 hours. I'm not kidding you, 48 hours. And uh, I'm not gonna do this for the rest of my life. You know, I still am a relatively young man. I'm still in my 40s, and uh, I'm a relatively healthy man. I'd like to stay that way. But there will come a day when I say, okay, enough is enough. Uh, and I don't think I'll ever retire. You know, I think I'll always, probably always do this podcast till the day I die or other, I'll have projects that I may do. I know I'll have projects I'm doing in private in laboratories, you know, stuff at, at my own house or whatever. But, um, but there's going to come a day where I'm going to be like, okay, I've put in enough time. I'm getting too old for this shit. All right. But thank you for bearing with me, and uh, that's why I haven't left one of these podcasts for you in a while. All right, all that said, aren't you glad that April is over? Oh, again, if you're new to this podcast, every year I talk about how that April is a notorious month, and at very least it is an extreme month, like extreme stuff happens in the month of April. It always has historically, and I've talked about this even back when I was hosting Speaking of Strange uh, 15, 20 years ago or whatever. And this is another one of those Aprils that I have added to the list because you might say, well, look, a lot of these lockdowns, especially like, and I'm, of course I'm in the United States, so I'm US centric, but I know people listen to this show all over the world. But here in the US, I know a lot of the lockdowns started in, in March, but April was like the first complete month where almost everything was locked down in the entire United States of America, which is, which is amazing because even people out there who uh, may or may not even like the United States, they still have a big uh, economic interest, you know, like a vested interest in the United States. And so when we all go down, uh, it sends ripples across the entire world. So April will go down as a notorious month. And you know what? That, uh, that comet that I mentioned in an earlier podcast, we had this big, crazy, I think they said it was going to be like a green comet that was going to light up the sky and was going to hit right at the end of April, like pass by. It wasn't going to hit, but you know what I'm saying? It was going to pass through the sky. And, and I was thinking, God, here's how, is how symbolic is this? We got this fucking comet on the way and all this other stuff. And it turns out that that thing just started breaking into pieces breaking up, breaking up, breaking up. And by the time it flew by, there was practically nothing left to see. And I think that is a very fortuitous sign. Because as I mentioned to you, usually, historically, a, a big comet has symbolized death. 
And maybe it was just us using all of our positive energy uh, that, that went out there and affected that body. I know if you're not into astrology, that may sound nutso to you. But it's fitting that that thing, it just, it's just broken up and it's past now. And here we are in a new era, May 1st, 2020. And listen, we are doing well. We are doing well. The steps that we've taken, magically speaking, metaphysically speaking, mystically speaking, to manifest a, a, a breakup of this coronavirus fear has so far been a big success. Because if you go back and you look in March at the, the, the horror that was being predicted, the deaths that were being predicted. Now, all the doctors and even the politicians are coming out and saying, well, we were really, really wrong about that. Not just wrong, but we have only a fraction of the deaths that they were predicting. I don't have the numbers in front of me, and it doesn't matter because if you give numbers anymore, Uh, You know, they just change every day. But you can go back and do your own independent research and you'll see what I'm saying. By now, we were supposed to have so many, like 10 times more dead people here. Like some kind of war scene here in the U.S. And, And on the contrary, not only have there been so many fewer deaths than they were expecting, But now you literally have doctors, and I've seen them on TV, I've read their articles, doctors coming out and from very established, you know, highly credentialed facilities saying that they're having to actually lay off and furlough medical staff in some really big hospitals because they don't have enough business. Now, isn't that something in the middle of a global pandemic? They don't have enough business. So the, even the medical business is suffering right now because of this big overreaction to sort of lock everything down with all this horror and fear that was being injected into our lives every day. And that says a lot, doesn't it? Because who are, you know, the, we're talking about the people on the front lines are now saying, all right, this may have gone too far. We, we're not using all this stuff that you gave us. All these beds are not filled. We're laying off people. It's time for us to sort of like help other people who have problems because the world's a very big place and a lot of people need doctors and nurses and medical uh, experts for a lot of reasons other than this one thing. So you know, let's open the doors and let everybody else get some help. You know, how many people out there need some surgeries and, you know, or they're, or they're not going to the doctor when they should because they're afraid they're going to get this thing and say they have something else they're now spreading. I mean, like they're, so even the doctors are saying, yeah, it's, it's time for us to say we've, this has gone too far. And do you know that I even saw an interview earlier today where one of the big guys with the World Health Organization is saying that Sweden's approach, the you know, their controversial approach of not shutting everything down, but just practicing some common sense social distancing has actually worked out well for them because they may have had a spike in deaths, but they got that over with and they were and so now they're it's like they're fine you know they flatten the curve without destroying their economy and so in places like the u.s the fear is that what we're doing is just kicking the can down the road like we're postponing the inevitable because eventually when we start poking our heads back outside well we don't have any resistance or immunity built up and then oh there's going to be a big spike again get back in your house get back in your house and this is going to just go on and on and on in cycles and there's no reliability in, in business or strategy. And look, the, the bottom line is when stuff like this happens, you just got to get out and say, let it run its course. And yes, some people are going to die. People die. Uh, you know, Nobody lives forever. Maybe I'll die. Uh, 
Maybe my parents will die. Maybe my all my friends will die. But they're, they're going to. Like, you can't do anything about that. So uh, maybe just the vulnerable people should sort of be the ones who stay at home most. Uh, and the rest of us say, let's let this thing run its course. Um, I don't know. Look, I'm not a doctor. I'm not here to give you medical advice. But I do believe that there are a lot of people in positions of power who are definitely abusing now this situation. So here is the next step for us. What we, what we did originally was we started sending out love to combat fear. And that was a very, very powerful wave that we sent out. And then we got even more precise and we started focusing more on our ability to manifest. And we're seeing the success from that, that we are changing minds. We have seen a reduction in the data of what to fear. People are fearing this situation less. And now what people are really getting pissed off and agitated and about is the intelligence of the politicians that are involved in making the decisions for us to recover from this situation because there is no magic bullet where you're going to drop this you know thing and say oh it's all over now everybody back to normal that can't happen um, so now the best we can hope for is intelligent leadership. And I know that seems a little bit oxymoronic. I'm, I know all across the world you're saying that is the funniest shit you've ever said, Joshua. What a paradox, right? Intelligent leadership. But look, let's get serious here. I'm going to ask you to do something that I've never asked you to do before. And that is because, and this for this one, I am only going to focus on those of you who own a wishing machine. In the past, I've given tips out for those of you who have other methods. And you know what? If you have another method and you think you can apply it to this, then go for it by all means. But I'm going to specifically hone this one toward those of you who have a wishing machine. So here is what I would like for you to do. I usually say... Do not target a specific person with your wishing machine. Only wish for yourself. And I have traditionally said that because that you can never really know all the variables affecting another person's life. And you might think that something is good for another person when it actually turns out to be bad for that person or vice versa. Because... You just, you can't know everything. People keep secrets. They have their own private lives. They have a destiny that they have to fulfill. So in this particular case, however, because we are Jedis and we're in warrior mode and we are trying to defeat this particular phenomenon, I am going you, I'm going to tell you right now, I want you to incorporate a person. What I want you to do is print out a picture of a politician that represents your connection, your personal connection to how this phenomenon is being treated. I'm not going to tell you print out this certain person Again, people listen to this show all over the world. But I want you to pick out a figure. Okay, it could be a national figure or a more local figure. It doesn't matter. Pick out a, a particular political figure that you think needs to have a little more intelligence, that needs an intelligence boost. And... Because we're gonna we're doing something positive here. 
We're trying to help this person be intelligent. So you print out that politician's picture and then you put it on your input plate of your device, your wishing machine. And then take a piece of paper and write on that piece of paper, I want you to, and then you fill in the blank. So I am not telling you who to put on there. I'm not telling you what to say. I'm telling you the method for doing this. Print out the picture of the person, put it on the input, take a piece of paper, write, I want you to, and put that on top of that person's picture. So now you have both of these on the input plate. Now you tune the machine as you normally would. Once the machine is tuned, you take the person's picture and you move it from the input plate to the output plate while you keep your command on the input plate. So at the end, and then if you have an electronic machine, that's when you turn it on. That's always, if you have an e-machine or electronic wishing machine, your final step is to always to turn it on. And so what you end up with is a wishing machine that has your piece of paper with your command on the input plate and the picture of the person on the output plate. So just to recap all that, you start your wishing machine from scratch, meaning everything, all the knobs are tuned to zero. If it's an electronic machine, it's turned off. Then you put the picture and the command both together on the input plate, doesn't matter which one's on top of the other. You go through the normal process of tuning your machine. When you're done, you move the picture of the person from the input plate to the output plate. And then at that point, you're done if it's non-electric. If it is electric, you turn it on and then you're done. And that is how we are going to try to now reduce this even further from sort of this abstract fear that haunts the world down to the specific individuals who are in positions of power to make decisions on your behalf. And that is why it's okay for us to use a person in this capacity for radionics because there's a difference between focusing on somebody like your neighbor or your loved one or whatever versus someone who has taken an oath to represent you. See the difference there? They're not like the, everybody else because they have traded, um, well, they've been given power and they supposedly traded their loyalty to represent us faithfully for that power. So we need them, them to be as intelligent as possible. And again, if you are using some alternative methods, let, let's say you prefer to use wands or something, like, well, then you can, you should know enough about what you're doing at this point to, to adapt your method to that or use numerous methods in conjunction. If you have a miraculous prayer board, well, you can just put a picture of that person on the middle of the prayer board and then pray for that person. But you word that however you want, okay? But I think it's, it's effective to think of you just saying, I want you to, and then like I say, you fill in the blank with whatever you think is the best decision. So, that's our next step to breaking all this down. And already there are certain places that are starting to open and you know, you see their phase ones kicking in uh, and that's good, but we don't want them to start phasing us in and then all of a sudden, t you know, snap us back out again. So by doing this particular method, what you're not projecting anything negative to that person. 
so you have nothing negative coming back to you you are actually projecting something positive to that person to make that person a better person at least from the manifestors point of view and you're the manifestor so screw it that's all that matters uh you know it, it is interesting though when you see some of these other news stories that are barely getting any coverage did you see that the pentagon has now released these videos of ufos flying around that we've been seeing for the past you know three years or whatever now they finally re released them and confirmed that they are legit and you know you, you had all these navy officials in the past saying that they they were legit but now the pentagon has formally released them and said yes these are real we don't know what these are and so the mainstream media asked president trump what do you think of that now the pentagon is, he says well, it's a hell of a video it's a hell of a video <laughs> he still won't commit to anything with the ufo stuff but you know if he gets reelected, i think it is very possible that he will be one of the biggest players in releasing ufo stuff and the reason I say that is because he loves attention and he loves ratings and he would love to go down in history as being the first president to come out and say, yes, they're real. He would love that. That fits completely within his personality. So we'll see. As you know, I predict that Donald Trump will be reelected. And I'm not saying that for any political reason i just every year i predict who's going to win the next election and i'm so far i've been 100 percent right maybe i'll be wrong for the first time but if indeed he is re-elected yeah he doesn't have to worry about getting elected again he's going to worry at that point about having that nice statue downtown there in washington dc and uh you know how many people would put up statues of him if he actually came out and like was the first president to give an honest speech about UFO disclosure, uh, I don't think he could resist that. So we have that happening right now. Interesting timing again for all this. And this is something that, you know, I'll toss out there. You may or may not be able to even relate to it you know my friend christian mcleod he's the head of the Asheville cryptid society in north carolina he has been plotting all of these cryptid sightings and just to refresh you a cryptid is an animal that may or may not exist so we're talking about something like bigfoot or the loch ness monster or mothman you know some get really weird but then some cryptids actually get discovered you know, not everything that's cryptid is some kind of mythological, fanciful thing. There are plenty of examples of things that were thought of as a cryptid that ended up uh, being discovered and they were real, like the mountain gorilla or uh, the coelacanth fish and stuff like that. So anyway, he has been plotting in Western North Carolina cryptid sightings based upon reports they've been getting, um, podcasts that he's been listening to, etc., and he says, and he actually showed me a graph of this. I don't know if he's made it public. There is just a big, big cluster of cryptid sightings that have been happening since we've gone into lockdown, especially. At least that's my understanding of the data. And that is interesting, isn't it? Because you would think that if there are less people out there running around in the woods, that it would make cryptids more comfortable coming out even if we're talking about something like bigfoot and you know i'm not going to get into the whole bigfoot thing because i'm not a big fan of like the fact that bigfoot's some kind of creature that lives in the woods i think bigfoot's something more complex than that but still we're talking about you know cryptid sightings in general whatever they are 
people do have a tendency to see them in more remote areas. And so it makes you think that, well, logically, you know, they've closed down, for example, huge places like the Pisgah National Forest is primarily closed down, I understand. Uh, these are places that would be teeming with people right now. Nice springtime weather, perfect time to go camping and sightseeing. Um, it, it, it would be an interesting thing to sort of compare the amount of sightings we have now with what we've had in the past. So those of you who are interested in plotting and you know keeping statistics on cryptozoology and similar things, I hope that you'll you know you'll get as, as scientific as you can about keeping a database because this is a this lockdown period is a great opportunity opportunity for us to draw comparisons about the role the impact that humans and human activity plays on paranormal phenomena and of course there's a bit of a catch-22 in there because you need somebody to be there to observe the phenomenon to begin with to tell you it happened but it can't hurt to just get as much data as you can so give it a try right give it a try and the last thing that I'll, I'll tell you before um, I have to wrap up the program here is that don't forget your Hapono Pono. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. In any order, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. And if you have some beads around, there is this phenomenon known as Hapono Pono beads. And you can take any bead necklace you've got and put it around your neck and uh, it reminds me of how people do the Hail Marys or whatever but people like Joe Vitale who write about Hapono Pono they use these beads and the, the beads remind them of the every time they say one of those things they touch another bead I'm sorry please forgive me thank you I love you I'm sorry please forgive me thank you I love you or whatever and you can say it as many times as you want to sort of help try to clear the garbage out of your subconscious mind and that helps you when you're doing your manifestations but we're doing a great job I'm really happy with all of you who are, are continuing to to do your best uh, using whatever power that you have your psychic power your manifestation power your magical mind your magical thinking in order to to combat this phenomenon because this is more than just some kind of virus you know viruses come and go no matter how bad they are they come and go but man there are bigger more devastating things that are happening here and there are globalists out there who would love to take us out and control the world and like I say they have wishing machines too they use magic too they use manifestation too but fortunately positive always defeats negative that's why we call it positive because positive is something and negative is nothing you just keep that positive energy radiating as powerfully as you can and we'll burn this whole thing up it'll evaporate like a vampire the cockroaches will flee but you got to keep shining the light you got to keep shining the light you know right now there are people who are experiencing um, isolation like they've never experienced before and there are a lot of people who felt like man I I've always heard I should be prepared but what happens if I'm not prepared what happens if I lose my power what happens if I lose my water? What happens if I run out of food? What happens if I can't go out and get my medicine? What happens? What happens? This is why this is why you should be interested in having as much energy independence as possible. And um, Mobius emailed me today and he said that he wants to give everybody a discount right now on some cool products and I posted links to these at joshuapwarren.com on my curiosity shop page which you should definitely go and check out regardless if you've never been there 
Uh, of course, he is the owner of the Sunshine Simple Solar Generator Company. We started it together, and I that was one of those things where it's like, I don't have time for this anymore. So he took it over. And right now, you can go and uh, you can get a 400 watt solar generator. Okay, one that's lightweight that you can take with you camping, or you can throw it in your car, you can just keep it for emergencies. You can get a 400 watt solar generator for $495. And, and you know how expensive shipping can be? Well, only right now, it's also free shipping in the United States. And we're talking about a solar generator, so you don't need any, any fuel, you don't need to burn any logs. You just put it outside, it's quiet, it doesn't stink, it just produces free electricity for you. And, um, if you want to, he said, here's the discount. If you want to upgrade it and get yourself an 80 watt panel to charge it so it charges twice as fast, he'll give you a discount right now. And you can get that whole shebang for $549. But this is really cool. He's never done this before. So many people are worried about like an EMP, like an electromagnetic pulse that could fry things. And who knows, at this point, anything's possible. He said he'll also throw in a free do-it-yourself kit to turn a metal trash can into a Faraday cage for storage. So that now a Faraday cage would prevent any type of electromagnetic pulse from hurting the circuitry in that thing. And so he will not only give you a discount, and free shipping in the US, but he'll tell you how to make a Faraday cage. You'll get this kit, this Faraday cage kit, and it will protect your generator from an elite an EMP. So that's pretty damn cool. Uh, if you're interested in, in that discount, uh, just you know, send me an email, uh, contact at joshuapwarren.com and I will forward it to him. There are a lot of people also who are looking up at the sky right now for UFOs because there are so few planes flying around. He also has the paratemporal night vision goggles shop, which are night vision goggles that are especially made and tested in the field for UFOs. So anyway, if you want to see that stuff and a lot more crazy shit, go to joshuapwarren.com, click the link to the curiosity shop, Look at everything there, but if you scroll to the bottom, you'll find the links to the Sunshine Simple Solar Generator. You can read all about that. You'll find the links to the paratemporal night vision goggles. And, uh, you know, he, he's been a, a great friend and business partner of mine for a long time, and he loves helping people. So that's why, listen, if you want to get one of these things and, and you just, you know, you're in a tough spot financially, just let us know. Maybe he'll work out a deal with you. I don't know. But I will tell you this. While you were there at joshuapwarren.com, I hope you click the link to this podcast. Now, you know I'll be updating you again soon. And God knows what I'm going to be telling you about because there's a lot happening right now and some of it I can't talk about yet. I also am going to be traveling soon on an airplane unless it gets canceled or delayed or whatever to do another TV show. So... While you're there at joshuapwarren.com, I want you to click the link to this podcast called Joshua P. Warren Daily and share this podcast with everybody. Please share it with your friends, your loved ones. I mean, tell them to sign up for the free e-newsletter there at joshuapwarren.com. Takes you two seconds. When you hit that button, you'll receive a free digital good luck charm instantly. Get the e-newsletter so you can stay informed. But again, while you're there, click the link to Joshua P. Warren Daily. This podcast is always short. It's free, commercial-free, independent, uncensored. And you can subscribe through various means for various formats, or you can just follow me on Twitter, at Joshua P. Warren, at Joshua P. Warren. And I will usually tweet when a new one is available. So that is it for today, this glorious May 1st, after <laughs> this very stressful April of 2020. 
Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your interest and support. Thank you for staying curious. And I will talk to you again soon.